Hey watch friends, happy new year. I hope everyone's having a great holiday season so far. As you might be able to hear from my voice, I unfortunately decided to go ahead and get sick over the holidays, but that being said, we won't let it stop us from having some watch fun here to start the new year. Today we're going to be checking out one from a microbrand we've checked out in the past. This is from Second Hour, though you might have noticed the logo did change from the past variants, and this is their Saddleberg. This is going to be launching early into the new year. Specifically, it is slated for February 17th of 2023. This is actually going to be a direct sale, so from their website, and additionally, it's not a pre-order, so they will be available, available to start shipping at time of launch. That's always something nice to see, and it's not that common in the microband space. I do want to mention up front for administrative matters, this is a prototype and it was loaned to the channel for review. Um, it is not otherwise a sponsored video and we'll talk about some of the details of production changes that are coming that you can expect. Before we dive into the specs on this, let's go ahead and first take a quick look at the packaging. Check out the packaging. This ships in an outer cardboard box with a second hour logo, pretty basic and flap construction there. When you open it up though, you do have this nice pouch inside, but first there's actually an envelope that does have this card in it and just has a nice little thank you from second hour. Let's set that aside. And then here is the zip up pouch. It's similar to ones that we've checked out in the past. However, this one is a little of a thinner profile. Zipper construction here to close and it is a hard uh, case there in second hour branded with embossing there. As we open this up, you can see this particular variant, I believe they list it's going to come with a two watch pouch. However, the one I received is just a single, which I think adds to the slimness. This would lock in down there. You can see, of course, the watch itself, and then it comes with this one canvas strap attached. There's additionally, I'm not certain if this is going to be the final variant or not. This is kind of an elastic two piece, almost like the parachute uh, style that we've seen from some other brands and then signed here, but I'm not sure again if that's going to vary or not. And then here there is the warranty card. You can see on the back the two year warranty that does come standard with this. So nice packaging for this as a total package. All right, now that we have a better feel for how it's going to ship, let's look at the details on the watch itself. As you can see here, it is a field style watch, but they tried to incorporate some dress elements that we'll look at as we go throughout. The sizing, the case is coming in at 40 millimeters and I got that dead on and that's measured roughly from the three o'clock to nine o'clock position. The bezel does step down, as you can see here, and measured at the flat, so the widest portion, it's coming in at 38.9 millimeters, so roughly a one millimeter step down there. The lugs are a stra strap change friendly 20 millimeters. The lug to lug, I measured a little smaller in their specs at 46 millimeters. The thickness is coming in at 10.1 millimeters, and that is including this crystal. The crystal itself is a flat sapphire crystal, as you can see here. It does have a beveled edge and sits slightly proud. And it does have, on this version, six uh, coatings of inner AR. They actually are, are kicking that up and it's going to be a little bit of a stronger AR application on the production version. As far as the movement, this is coming with the venerable Miyota 9015. So it's going to have automatic movement, hacking, hand winding, all those kind of good things, higher beat, 28,800 beats per hour, all that good stuff. If you know the channel, you know it's one that I like overall, but there is one quirk that comes with it we'll talk about as we go throughout. As far as the water resistance, this is coming, I think, consistent with the style at 100 meters or 10 atmospheres, keeping nice slim profile for it, but still giving ample water resistance. The weight on this factory included strap is only coming in at 65.8 grams. So nice featherweight uh, overall and good weighting there. I'm pleased with that. Now that we have the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and get a better feel for the deeper uh, aspects of the watch itself. First, for the colors. There's the one we're looking at today, which is obviously a white dial, but it also actually packs full loom. There's additionally going to be three brush dial variants, and those come in gray, blue, as well as black. As we mentioned there, this one with being the full loom is going to have a matte texture for the dial. However, the other three variants have a vertical brush, so you get a very different light play depending on which version you go with. What they do share in common though, is they're going to have a sector kind of layout, so those cross hashes that run through the middle of the dial, and that's something that I personally like. At the 12 o'clock position, they do have the updated second hour logo. Then down at the six o'clock position, they have a cutout, which isn't a frame to date window, but it does have a nice beveled edge to it, which does serve to function almost like a frame would, and I think that's a nice accent touch. As you move out to the perimeter, you not only have the 24 hour marks that we'll talk about shortly, but additionally, you do have a chapter ring on the outside, which gives you your individual minute and second hashes, so for great legibility there. Additionally, you're going to notice that at the five minute increments, you do have principally going to be with your black marks, 
But then at the 12, 4, and 8 position, consistent with past second hours, those are your emphasis points, and those have the red accent color on this particular variant. Cool touch, and great to see that de design language carry through. As far as the hardware, the hour and minute hand are going to be what I would describe as being a crease, kind of like a dauphine down the middle, but they're what I would describe as like a blunted sword handset. Not really quite a paddle, not really quite a sword, but I would say more reminiscent of a sword with a blunted tip. As far as the finishing, it is going to be polishing, though it of course is broken up with having loom in there as well. And in this particular variant, it is covered in or coated in black over that polishing. As far as the second hand, it does carry through with an, an arrow tip out on the uh, exterior, but then additionally, it's going to have that accent color, and in this case, red applied. As far as the markers, one of the things that sets this one apart is you actually have um, pyramid-shaped applied markers principally, and then alternating with your numerals as well on the even positions. Those pyramids have a nice application. Not only do they add depth to the overall watch, but I like the fact that instead of just going with triangles, they did go with pyramids, though of course they're elongated there as well, but that gives a nice accent to, uh, to this overall and really kind of breaks it up and sets it apart from some others, especially with having those numerals mixed in, so it's a great interplay. Additionally, though, I like the fact that they shifted over from just a typical where a lot of times you'll see field watches that are only printed, so that adds a nice variation of depth as you go throughout. But it does still have your printing, not only for your 24-hour numerals, but then as we already saw, for your chapter angle legibility as well. So that's a nice touch overall there. As far as the loom on this particular variant, it's quite strong. It's a BGW9 loom that is applied. As we already talked about, it's a full loom dial. So while the other variants do carry through with the BGW9, they won't have quite as much pop as is always the case when you're looking at a full loom dial versus not. But this has endured quite well. As you can see through this footage here, I mean, it really doesn't fade a whole heck of a lot. And this is actually on the prototype. They expect the production version is going to be even more strong than this. So that's excellent and really can't complain there. Shifting over to the bezel, the bezel on this is fixed, which is in keeping with the field style. It does play with the finishing, though you can't tell as much because this particular variant is going to be DLC coded. But it does have on the exterior lip, you can kind of see just the light play there with that polish accent. And then it does have circular brushing as its principal finish on your main surface. There is a steep slope to the bezel, which bridges between the very slim case going up to that crystal. Shifting over to the case itself, it of course does carry through with that DLC coating. And I should note, the other variants, this is the only one that comes with the DLC. The other variants do uh, also feature a coating though. So th this raises, this is true DLC here. And on the other versions, it's going to have a 1200 Vickers coating on that. So all of these should have excellent scratch resistance. Though of course, as is always the case with DLC being very durable, but if you do scratch it, it is going to show a little more than the other variants where it would just blend a little more. As far as the actual case shape, you can see that this has nice flowing lines to it. It does have downturn lugs and it's a very slim mid case in profile, though the overall watch package is slim as well. The finishing again mixes with brush and polishing. And in this case, it goes with a horizontal brush running the length of the case, but it then has those polish accents that lip and give kind of a nice chamfer at the top and bottom, which visually slims it out and really adds to some of that kind of dress feel that they were talking about with the field watch. As far as the lug profile, I think again, in keeping with a somewhat dressier style, it has what is, I would say, robust lugs, but they're very delicate looking. So it adds a nice smoothness to this, and I think a great taper. And you can see here, nice curvature, nice flow, really, really pleased with the silhouette that this presents. Shifting over to the crown side, you can see in keeping, in my opinion, with the field styling, this one does not have any crown guards, so that just sits nice and flush with the case there. As far as the crown itself, this is coming in at 5.9 millimeters. It is a screw down configuration. And as you can see, it is signed with that logo matching with the dial and it does have dual texture. So you can see how that really plays with the light there as we move that around. And that's, I think, a nice touch. The finish on it is going to be a coin edge type milling. Very easy to grip a hold of, no complaints there, no slippage, I think decent size. So even though it's not a huge crown, you have plenty of access, no problem manipulating that at all, very pleased. Shifting over to the case back. The case back, I will note up front, this is going to have some changes on the production version, some pretty significant ones. The finishing though is going to be a circular brushing that will carry through. But in this one, it is actually uh, just a press fit. However, on the production version, it will be a screwing case back. That's a welcome change in my opinion. Additionally, while it does have clean text 
on this. On the prototype, unfortunately, the uh, they did produce with a, a typo in the date. That will actually be corrected to 1943, not to 1945. So a very minor omission. And again, that's partly why you have prototypes there. But that's already been corrected as I'll pop up on the screen so you can get an idea of what this looks like in the other variants. Shifting to the strap. The strap itself, as it comes on, is going to be 20 millimeters, and it does taper down to 18 millimeters. As we talked about earlier, there are two straps included, but we only have the one to look at today. It is going to be a canvas strap, and it is a padded canvas, so it is thicker at the uh, close to the lugs. It does have leather backing on that, and then in this particular one that we're looking at, as you can see, it's black, and it does have the color accents or the contrast stitching that goes along with that, that I think plays off of the dial well. As far as the buckles, these do have custom buckles, so they are signed with the second hour logo. And then on this particular variant, it does uh, carry through with the DLC coding as well. On the back, they do have quick release spring bars as well. And as you can see here, for the length, unfortunately, this doesn't quite fit my six and a half inch wrist. It's a little bit too long. And then additionally with the leather backing, it's a little bit stiff. So it needs some breaking in there uh, to, uh, to fit. Um, but I really need at least one more hole, possibly two more holes. So that's something to be mindful of. If you have smaller wrists, you'll probably have to change that strap out. I personally have most worn this on a Notice Tech Tough Hybrid, which is just an all black configuration. And I actually gotta say, I like that a lot. Not only has it been superbly comfortable, which those straps are awesome, but I really like the look of just that more uh, subdued uh, with just the solid black as opposed to the accent colors. All right, so now that we have a better feel for the watch itself, let's go ahead and bring in a few different comps here so we can get an idea just how this stacks up. First, naturally, I wanted to bring in, this is the other second hour, um, this is the mandala that we looked at in the past. You can see here just the different logo style between those two, just to get an idea. And then here it is as far as kind of size and comparison. Next, I'll go ahead and bring in, this is the RZE, you can see the original uh, RISA, but this is RZE Resolute. And this just gives you an idea here with another 40 millimeter field style watch as far as kind of size and comparison there. Next, this is a Zelos Aurora. And this is the 38 millimeter version. So again, just gives you an idea there, a lot more dial presence on this and then there's kind of the overall stature of that and then the one that i have that's closest for comparison this is the gravathon argomatic and you can see here with kind of the lugless design or hidden lug design these i think really stack pretty closely to each other both 40 millimeters as i recall um, this one does have a little more dial presence but you can see it pretty comparable and then again here's with dlc coating you can see here just that difference of the brush and the polish accents versus the finishing on this Gravathon here with more of the bead blasted uh, kind of finish. So it gives you just an idea as to how that kind of looks and presents differently, but there's for, uh, for overall sizing. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, hopefully have a pretty good feel for the watch itself, but let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of the positives, a couple critiques, as well as the overall summary. First for the positives, you know, the first thing I have to mention is the slimness. I absolutely love that. I think it's a joy to wear. I really enjoy slim watches and this one is very slim, especially for the total packaging that you get. So I think that's excellent. Additionally, I think personally, it's a very attractive design. I think it has what you would want in a field watch. It has excellent legibility, especially on this white variant with the white and black contrast. And I think it's just a fantastic everyday watch as well. Whether you go with the DLC or the other ones that have the hardened coating, uh, hardened coating you're going to have a nice scratch resistance, and I think it's exactly what you would want in an everyday piece. Light, not gonna wear you down, one you can easily forget about. Additionally, I do think the sizing is pretty versatile at the 40 millimeters, but with a good bit of dial presence. It works well on my six and a half inch wrist as we've seen, but I think it would work just fine on larger wrists as well, because it still has plenty of dial presence there. You know, for the field watch, a lot of people, including myself, are not necessarily crazy about having the all uh, printed for the markers. So I like the fact that they went ahead and put applied markers on this and then mixed in the printing. So it still has that field feel to it, but at the same time, it does have a little more depth, a little more pop than you would typically get. And I think the pyramids were a nice choice for the primary markers. And then just the finishing, you know, it's a little harder, like I said, to tell with this black one, but the finishing I found to be excellent. The brushing's clean, the polishing's clean, everything just looks really nice and is really good overall, though there is one aspect we'll talk about that's going to be addressed in the production version. All right, as far as some of the critiques though, for the strap fit, you know, as I already uh, mentioned earlier, this one unfortunately won't really go down to a six and a half inch wrist. You're probably limited, I would guess, 
six and three quarters as far as your wrist size for the number of holes that this has. So it should, because we're clear out here at six and a half inch wrist not fitting, this should accommodate quite large wrists as well. So if you're larger wristed, you'll be great. If you have a wrist at or below my wrist size, unfortunately the straps won't work for you. Additionally, with being a padded strap and having leather backing, I would have personally preferred just an all canvas strap and no padding. I think Yes, um, some people think that the leather is a little more comfortable, but I prefer just a solid canvas. Um, but that being said, that comes down to subjective uh, as far as uh, preferences there. The biggest thing that I have to mention is, you know, we talked about the movement of I'm a big fan of the Miyota. One of the things that is a knock of the 9015 or the Miyota 9 series is that oftentimes with having the unidirectional rotor winding, you can get a loud rotor. And I have found it varies from piece to piece. In this particular one, as you can kind of hear there, just that rattly sound to that. That is something this one has a little more rotor uh, rattle and sound than I would prefer. However, do note, and this is very important, again, it does vary from watch to watch. And even in these prototypes, they have said that it does vary. So while with having a slim case and with having, you know, not as much as far as uh, dampening with the case back because you do have slimmer dimensions, you might get a little more rotor noise in general. This one I think is somewhat of an outlier and specifically they've actually taken some, uh, some action to dampen the rotor on the production version to ensure that they're all consistently uh, going to be quieter uh, for that. So that should already be addressed, but it's something I'd be remiss if I didn't point out. And then finally, just another preference item on this full loom variant, while I appreciate the fact that they wanted to add loom accents on the hands as well, I would have personally, I think, preferred if they either had gone with a black loom for this just to keep the full black legibility. I think it washes out a little more. You have plenty of hand length that you can still easily make it out on that white dial, but I just think it would have been a little better to have that kind of blacked out. Yes, black loom doesn't perform as well, but the reality is with a full loom dial, you're oftentimes using the contrast anyways, not relying on the hand loom where that sometimes can distract. So it's really a minor item, but it is something that I think I would have preferred or possibly even if they had just gone with a solid handset make that full red tip and then make those solid uh, solid black you know i'm kind of indifferent to that but it's something that i think i would have preferred to change there as far as the summary you know at the end of the day as we've already kind of touched upon i think this is a well-designed watch i think you know it keeps the overall field feel in feel field familiarity while adding some of their unique design language some of their unique touches that make this a compelling proposition as far as the pricing, we didn't talk about that. I think it's very reasonable. It's coming in at $455 for the other versions, for the other colors, and then $475 for this DLC coated version with the full loom dial. I really don't think that's bad for uh, the, uh, the specs, and I'm honestly not certain they might be doing a discount at launch, but that's the full retail price. So with that, I think it's very reasonable for having a Miyota movement and all of the stuff that you get along with this. Not too bad at all. And then for the uh, versatility, as we already talked about the sizing of this, I think it's going to work for pretty much every wrist. So if you're in the market for a field watch, I think this is a strong contender, short enough lug to lug to work for small wrist, large enough dial presence to work for large wrist. I think you're gonna be happy across the board with this as an everyday piece if you decide to pick one up. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you did enjoy this, please do give that like button a tap. And if you haven't done so already, please smash that like or that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.